This one is, uh, is a great tool for creating doors. Um, I think uh, a lot of this comes down to uh, building in something robust that you can, you can use consistently across all of your doors. Um, the problem that I've had with building my own content and you know, piecing it out is that as you go along, you realize, oh, well, now I need to add this feature. And you kind of go back, and you've got to rework everything again. Um, with this tool, the concept uh, from the maker is that you have this available to the user directly. So they can go in and grab from all the stuff that you have pre-built. Basically, this is all um, you know, shake and bake, basically. So you can take door panels and door jam styles and all of these different pieces that you might use to make a door. And you can customize those families. You can add in the parameters that you want. But out of the box, this comes with a slew of stuff that's common practice for anyone. And let me just jump in the demo on this guy. So they've done a great job here of giving you not only for your doors, but for you as a BIM manager, um, a slew of resources. And one of them that I think is great for users as well is a spec sheet that really lays out for all doors that this tool makes, um, here's how it works. And it goes through and it explains you know, what the features are and what you can expect to see from them what changes you know you'll have available to the door. And this is something that I feel like is priceless to a user because I, don't, I can't tell you how many times that I've seen a user use a door and because they don't know, or any family, and because they don't know what features it has, they may go in and kind of destroy the family trying to get it to do what, it wants, what they want it to do, even though it already has that available. So this is a great way, I think, to see exactly what you have available and know how it works. And the best thing here is that it's consistent. This one thing handles all doors. It gives you an explanation that you can understand for it. So we've got two options to start out. You can do a standard door or you can do a curtain wall door. Um, you can choose which way your swing is, uh, is shown on it. And then you can choose whether it's an imperial or metric. And it also has a set of defaults. So you can go in and customize a series of defaults, things that are for just about every door. And the great thing about this is once this is customized, if a user needs to make a one-off door, then they've got all the presets that is your company standard um, by default. They have to kind of go out of their way to get what they want. Um, I personally am a little reluctant to just toss this tool out and have all users making doors all the time uh, without having a nice solid library pre-made of all of this. But it's a great tool to build your library from as well. Um, you can see here, you can choose what kind of door you want. I, I couldn't find a door that I was thinking of that wasn't available here. Uh, definitely challenge you to see if you can find one. He's been really good at, uh, at getting everything down that I could think of. Um, and it's been uh, the options and the way that you work through this to get your door made is really clear. Uh, you'll notice if you just pick your door and you want to make it that uh, you don't get the option to do that. You've got to actually name it first, and that was that last tab. But we're going to go through each one of the tabs here. You can see where you can pick your, your jam, your framing here. And it's very clearly illustrated as to what the different measurements are, and you can customize those things here as you're building the door. Um, some of these things that you're seeing here that are customized um, values are things that you might have to dig into nested families to find. So I definitely heed you to set all of these things up if you're using this and uh, get those things preset before you make the door. Otherwise, you kind of dig some more. And then it's wor not worth it, and you just kind of come back to this and make it again. Um, so that's the beauty of it. You can kind of go through this really quickly and set some of those things up. Um, you can see here, we're looking at the panels. And the panels that are available in here, like I said, come stock out of the box with a lot of stuff that's common. And if you wanted to make your own custom panels, you can go dig into those templates that start out. And you can customize those uh, as you wish. You can pick your handles for the door, front and back. Um, 
you know, it lets you pick either both the same or different. And it even at the bottom gives the ability to set specific criteria for where the handle is being placed. You know, maybe you've got a push bar on the back and that's at a different height than the handle is on the front. Uh, and all that's done based on the origin of that family. So you want to be aware of that. It's one thing I, I think would be a nice addition here is to show you maybe where the origin of that handle is, because I did one of these long bars and it ended up on the floor. And I was like, why does that happen? Uh, because the origin was at like the top of the handle. So there's another thing that, you know, whatever you think would be easily done, maybe you want to restructure the family a little bit to get it in there the right way, move the origin to a different spot. Um, but once again, you know, giving you options for a lot of these things as you go through. Picking trim for it, you can pick one trim for the outside, a different trim for the inside. Um, no trim at all. Uh, same thing with, with the door jams. You could pick no jam as well. And once again, you can add your own custom stuff in here. So it's pretty easy to customize. I didn't have any problems doing that. The last thing he does here, which I think is awesome, is he allows you to put in two sort of user components. So things that aren't standard, but are this extra thing that you might want to add to a door. Like for a garage roll-up, you might want the uh, the side view annotation so that you can see where the door rolls up to or you might have an over panel on a door that you want to throw in or a window above the door that kind of stuff uh, and then you know you've got basically all the information that you're going to add to it the type information instance information and then this last screen here is great because it lays out all the things that you've selected you can see what you've made you can confirm it give it a name set a type and then you build the door, and you're done, and it loads in. Uh, the build of the door did take a, you know, maybe a minute or two, so it was a little longer than I expected. But you just build a whole door in like five minutes or less. So, and it's you know exactly what you want. So when you get to a one-off door that you really need, this is super fast to make it. Uh, it does have some custom uh, detail level information, so things like showing the jams only on fine. Uh, of course, you can go in and edit the families to make changes on that if you want it to be different. And that is Door Factory.